Ladies and gentlemen, it's your five on Friday vaping news and advocacy report for October 30th, 2020. Today on the news, California sued for its draconian ban on flavored tobacco. More news and changes by the FDA regarding PMTAs. Manila medical expert urging their FDA to base decisions on science instead of Bloomberg's money. Vape companies in China report indicates financial turnover is in the billions of dollars. And our science bit for today, there's at least two dozen vaping health studies released weekly. We'll briefly cover some of them. And lastly, our advocacy section, we will talk about ATHRA, the Australian Tobacco Harm Reduction Association. More on that, follow up right after this. Halloween weekend here on uh, Hunky Vape, and here's your first article for today. California is being sued for its draconian ban on flavored tobacco products. Articles posted in uh, CSP Daily News. Lawsuit challenges California's draconian ban on flavored tobacco sales. R.J. Reynolds is one of many other companies that is suing the state of California for its draconian ban on flavored tobacco products. Whether you like to admit it or not, your vape device is classified as a tobacco product in the state of California. And the flavor ban is going to mean that you are not going to be able to get any e-liquid for your vape that is of a flavored variety. You will be able to get natural flavors such as tobacco. Well, I think the manufacturers in the state of California have had enough of this bull. And they says, you know what? It's time to get the lawyers involved. Earlier this year, the Food and Drug Administration banned the sale of flavored cartridge-based electronic nicotine delivery system products, and since then, it has reported that fewer U.S. youth are using e-cigarettes compared to 2019, according to the lawsuit documentation. Looking at the figures that we reported last week, daily use of electronic vaping products by high schoolers is not what it was last year. It is down 10%. Actually, it's a fall of 30% from last year. 35% stated that they tried it last year. 24% tried it this year. Daily use is less than 5%. When you're talking about middle school and lower, it's less than half a percent. So now it's time for all these uh, facts and figures to come out in court. And hopefully they can get this uh, draconian law overchanged, overturned. Next, FDA is at it again. They say that they're going to be making a list of PMTA applications available to the public. However, they have yet to do so. This next article published in the Vaping Post indicates that the FDA has made a public statement that they are going to be publishing the list of people who have applied and consequently, the number of products that have an extension, a legal extension to sell their products until their PMTA application has been processed. However, as is everything else that is done by the FDA, it is long on promises and short on delivery. However, you can follow up with this article published in the Vaping Post stating that the FDA will make a list of PMTA applications available to the public so that you can stay away from unregulated vaping products. Additionally, this article comes from the Vaping Scout. Vaping Scout indicates that the PMTA process is changing once again. Remember when the FDA told manufacturers that there's going to be a streamlined process for you to apply for your PMTA, your pre-market tobacco authorization for your product? Well, that never happened. And now that they've got a crap ton of applications already in front of them that they're trying to process, they've decided to put out some new guidance to the PMTA process on how to conduct a study on tobacco product perception and intentions. Now, they're saying that this is an optional thing and may be submitted along with applications to gain approval for the market. However, I think what it boils down to is 
all the applications that have been submitted so far have produced staggering results. The toxicology reports are far less than they ever anticipated them being. They're finding out that the youth uptake and the studies that have been submitted documenting youth use or new youth addiction because of these products is not what they thought it was. And now they are putting out guidelines and standards on how to design and conduct the TPPI studies to support tobacco product applications. This is a draft guidance. It hasn't technically been completely formalized or finalized. And they are giving the people that have submitted PMTAs until December 28th to submit these optional documents for approval of their products. Next article. This comes from Manila. We have a medical expert who's begging their Food and Drug Administration to base their regulatory maneuvers and measures on science, not on fiction. More like he didn't want to come out boldly and say that he wants the uh, Food and Drug Administration to base their proposed vape and heated tobacco regulations on science instead of Bloomberg's money that's been funneled into the Philippines FDA. The only two places that the FDA in the Philippines have gotten money has been directly from Bloomberg Philanthropies and the subsidiaries that Bloomberg has donated money to, such as the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, which is funded quite extensively by no one other than Michael Bloomberg. All right. Now we're going to take a look at, for those of you concerned about, you know, what's going to happen to all these vape companies out there. Well, this technology has been around for 10 years now. That has formalized the manufacturing process, especially in China, where most of these products are made that we use on a daily basis. And looking at the uh, Shenzhen top 500 corporations on their stock exchange, the top 500 enterprises, we find S'more has a rank of 92 out of 500. We have Jinjia Group, ranking of 148. Smock ranks at 213. Botan Flavor is at 416. And Inikin ranks at 448. They have to report their financial disclosure statements how the companies are doing and what kind of turnover they have. Well, this article sums it up for you. They have a turnover of 15.05 billion RMP, which is the Chinese currency. That translates into a turnover. Are you ready for this? Two and a quarter billion dollars is turned over by these companies every single year. The vape industry has grown significantly and there is so much money tied up in it right now that even if these politicians enact these draconian laws, they are going to have significant ramifications in the financial markets if things do not progress the way they are. However, as we've already found out in the past, prohibition doesn't work. When a consumer's market demands a product, and that product, for whatever reason, has too many regulatory hurdles, or it has a situation where in certain locations the product is banned, that product will be filled by a black market. And if these products are manufactured in China, they will find their way into this country. Whether the FDA gives approval for these products or not, you will continually see these products in the hands of consumers in the, across this country. Next, jumping over for our science bit, we talked about uh, plenty of times, always ending the uh, news segment with the science article. And I wanted to do this on a regular basis. However, I was a little concerned that I would be able to find a new scientific study that can be published every week on this channel. However, we've got a post here in Vaping 360. Jim McDonald published it just the other day 
says, uh, vaping health studies. There are at least two dozen new studies on vaping published every single week. Many of them are about vaping and health. They range from medical studies on vaping health risks to analysis of e-liquids and constituents and vapor to research on vaping and nicotine addiction. Some of these are released with a lot of fanfare because obviously they have some alarming claims that they, they think that they've proven. However, anytime those studies are retracted, there's no fanfare or any noise being made whatsoever about that change. So our commitment to you here on Hunky Vape is going to be to publish some type of scientific information to you, our viewers, about the effects of vaping. We all know that it's safer than smoking cigarettes. We all know that this is not a completely harmless thing that we choose to do, and that there are some side effects of vaping. If you'd like to check out those two particular aspects of it, jump on over to Vaping360, and you can click on this article yourself and read how it's safer than smoking and what the side effects are of vaping. Because like everything, including water, there are side effects of overconsumption. And like my coffee, if I overconsume it, there are going to be side effects of having too much caffeine. So, just out of curiosity, looking into the science segment, let's see what the research says. Which flavors are preferred by adults? I know my favorite one. It's a grape flavor. Let's take a look at what the scientific studies, we have two papers that were published in 2018 that confirm adult vapors prefer sweet and fruity flavors to tobacco flavors that most non-vapers assume ex-smokers would like. Yeah, well, when I quit smoking, I didn't want to have anything to do with tobacco or any kind of tobacco derivative. So we've got a flavor study led by Christopher Russell used uh, data from 2016 survey of almost 21,000 frequent American vapors to show the fruit and dessert flavors were by far the most popular among all kinds of vapors, even dual users. And then we've got another Barcelona's paper that was the largest ever survey of American vapors flavor preferences. He surveyed over 69,000 vapors. And the survey showed that more than 80% of current, former, and never smokers who vape preferred fruit or dessert, pastry, and bakery flavors. Among the exclusive vapors, just 7.7% prefer to vape tobacco flavors. Well, I'm not going to harp on a dead horse because I think you guys know most of this already. The people who watch this channel already know the comprehensive science that is out there that says vaping is much safer than smoking deadly combustible cigarettes. So I'm going to skip over the rest of the article. You can jump on uh, Vaping360 and read it for yourself if you're interested. And now we're going to jump over to our advocacy section. Today we're going to highlight or feature Athra. Athra is the Australian Tobacco Harm Reduction Association fighting for vapors' rights in Australia. If you take a look at the link that's going to be listed in the description of this video, you'll find it goes to the Vaping Frequently Asked Questions. So for those of you that aren't vapors or just happen to stumble across this news report, check out the link to Athra. Vaping Frequently Asked Questions. Is it tobacco harm reduction? What technically is vaping? Why do people vape? How many Australians vape? Is vaping legal in Australia? As well as sections on health and safety, how it's used to quit smoking, what the youth vaping rates are in Australia, and any other questions you may have is probably covered in their frequently asked questions. So that concludes our report for Halloween weekend here at Hunky Vape. And my last statement to you as always, Keep on vaping. It got you off of cigarettes. And even without nicotine, you can keep on vaping to stay away from deadly combustible cigarettes. All right, everybody, have a great weekend. Enjoy your Halloween if you celebrate it. That's it for today.